Hi everyone, it's Joe, Kai and Meg from Alicia and I'm talking about something I'm super passionate about which is feet and for those of you that have met both of us um, I think we know just how excited I get talking about feet because it's a really really big part of us so if we are having any issues upstream in our body so whether we're you know suffering any knee pain or hip pain or low back pain we really need to to tune in to actually what's going on downstream with our foot. So very, very briefly, our, sh our foot was meant to be a foot. You know, it's designed <laughs> to be a foot. And if we look at a lot of the structure from shoes these days, a lot of them are pointed at the toes and they're also on slight ramps, which means that it's actually going to throw off the structure of our body and it's compressing our toes. So a lot of things that I'm seeing um, a lot in the world room today is um, bunions, plantar fasciitis, the big toe crossing over the second toe, and we're ending up with feet that are sort of, you know, shaping towards a point, which was never ever the case. Our feet are wide at the top and our, our um, toes should be able to move like our fingers. I find this a great image from some really amazing guys called the Foot Collective. So if we put our hand in a shoe for like 30 years or 40 years, can you imagine how rigid that would be? So what's happening over time is that these muscles on the underside of the foot, we have four layers of muscle, 33 joints and 26 bones. And if we're not using them, like as in walking on rough or uneven surfaces, um, or allowing our toes to spread and support us with balance, these four layers of muscle on the underside of our foot, well, they're going to collapse because they're not being used. Which means that when the muscles have collapsed, we're going to start to medially rotate, right? Because there's nothing holding the structure of the foot up. Am I making sense so far? Yes. Okay, good. So if that is going to happen, what that means is that the knee is also going to medially rotate which is knee surgery in a nutshell. So the knee is a hinge joint, right? It needs to activate and it needs to move over the ankle. If we spend too many years with our knee on an inward rotation, a medial rotation, one, we're going to suffer knee issues pretty quickly, but two, our hip is also doing the same. So we need to reshape and restructure those muscles of the feet so that our knee can come back in alignment and our hip can stay open. The second part that's really important is, and I don't have one with me, but sitting in chairs, right? This action is one, uh, really weakening our glute medius, this side here, right? And also teaching our hips to be a hinge joint when it really is a ball and socket. It's meant to move around the joint, right? But with a weak glute medius, it means that there's not gonna be a lot of muscle holding onto the hip to help it stay open. So we need to strengthen this guy and we need to strengthen the muscles of our feet in order to improve our knee health, our hip health, and of course our low back health. So we're gonna share three uh, movements or techniques today that you can do with a friend um, or yourself, but I definitely don't recommend with a dog or a puppy, they'll take off with the balls, they'll take off with the jelly blocks, but have fun. It's all about having fun and being aware of how we can strengthen these muscles of the foot. The first thing we need to know is we have a tripod on our foot, right? So we have this core of the foot, which is 60% into the heel and 40% into the ball of the foot. Okay, so I want you to just find that position now. So as we're coming into this position, you can feel that there's a triangular shape, right? From the heel to the two balls of the foot. There's not much weight into the toes, right? And just from this position, Spread your toes and maybe just pick up the, the opposite foot and just notice what it feels like to stand on this tripod of the foot and come into a balance. All right, let's try the other side. So again, 60% into the heel, 40% into the ball of the foot and then just have a little bit of a balance here. Try not to use the toes on your standing foot. Cool, so that's a really great place to start, to start to bring your awareness to this tripod of the foot. Cool? Yep. So what you're going to feel is in time, the glute media start to strengthen. All right, to become more familiar with this area, I'm using Jenga blocks, and this is a technique that's being taught down from my teachers. So we're gonna use two Jenga blocks, and we're gonna create almost like a bit of a Japanese slipper. So the Jenga blocks are gonna go down onto the ground, Right, and they're on the, the flat side, okay? 
it would be quite difficult if we put them on that side. We want to make sure they're on the flat side. Both of these blocks, one's going to be on the heel, one's going to be on the ball of the foot, right? So as I stand onto this, I'm just going to come a bit closer to the camera so you can see. You need to see my face for this. So as you can see, Joe will be also on the tripod of a foot. So my toes are lifted and I'm going to then start to practice to then lift up the other foot and straight away, you're going to notice that this is going to be a little bit harder. So keeping your gaze just on one spot in front of you, and we're going to balance here for about 15 seconds. You'll feel the muscles of your foot really start to fire up here. So it's a really great one if those muscles in your foot have started to collapse. We're going to hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Great. Let's change sides. Where did you feel that? I think I've it's been in a lot of places actually. Yeah. yeah. Through the glutes. Yeah, so you really start to fire that glute medius up. So we're trying to just, again, get more bang for our buck is to how can we strengthen muscles too? How can we strengthen the glute? Let's try the other side. So setting up that tripod of the foot, heel, ball of the foot, nothing in the toes, and then soften the standing knee, and then we're going to balance. So we want to be really light through our arms. Like, you know, you visualize a tightrope walker and it's super soft through here. Keep the soft knee bend so that you're also strengthening the quadricep, the BMO. And we're going to go for another, say, 10 seconds here. Don't forget to breathe just in case you've forgotten that. We'll go for five, four, three, two, and one. Really nice work, guys. So now that you're aware of that place of the tripod, of I really recommend practicing that for longer, you know, moving up to about a minute in that sense as well. So Joe and I are going to play a little game here. Um, we're going to build a little tower. And again, this is a really nice way to really strengthen the, the muscles of the feet. What we're going to be looking for is to build this, right? So you can see that there's two checker blocks and one on top. But we're going to do it with our feet, okay? <laughs> so you, you cannot use your hands. So we're going to come up to stand with the Jenga blocks. Now they're on the second height. So basically we're working with three Jenga blocks and you work together as a team. The one thing that you can't do is pick up the Jenga block between your big toe and your second toe, right? So it's cheating to do that, right? We actually want to use the, the whole foot to spread the toes and to catch the block like that, to turn it on its side, to then start to build the tower. So we're gonna give that a bit of a go. So again, working with a friend, working together at the same time, and just picking up, or doing our best to pick up the block, and then you have to turn your hip to get it to stand on the side. And it can be a great teacher of frustration, patience, Breath. We're doing pretty well. <laughs> so I'll let Joe do that one to put it on top. And it's great to do with kids, um, with partners, with friends. And it, you're just not only strengthening the muscles of the feet, but practicing patience. <laughs> this is really good. So if you get that towel up, you know, I really recommend going for about two minutes, two or three minutes. Use your other foot as well, and then try to put one on top. All right? So. What you'll find is you've really got to move your body and your hips in a certain way to try to, and this is going to stack it. Oh! <laughs> and if Joe can possibly put another one on top of that. So you can see how my hips were moving in order to try to figure this out. So again, it's a great way to practice balance, but we're really starting to use that flexion extension of the toes to try and strengthen those muscles of the feet. So it's a really, really great little <laughs> game to play. Um, and it's perfect for kids to really teach us patience as well, but just using that gripping of the toes again. Yes. So pick up pigs, pe pigs. <laughs> pick up pegs, towels, whatever you can at home to start to use those muscles of the feet again. The last one we're gonna do is with the Jenga box as well. We're going to create a little, um, little dodgy little car track here. So it's all about having fun. You know, the most important thing is sometimes we can get given exercise or whatever and it just isn't fun. Mm. So we want to do something we enjoy. So Joe's going to stand on one side and I'm going to stand on this side. And again, um, you don't need to see our faces for this one. It's more so for the feet. 
So what's going to happen is we're close to the, the jenga blocks, we've got to soften the standing knee, and you've got to keep your foot low as we start to travel through the blocks. So I'm not only missing the block, but I'm also missing Joe's foot. And I'm working the standing leg, and I'm also getting an external and an internal rotation of my hip, and I'm shaking a lot. So we're trying not to knock over the blocks, but work towards our edge. So you really want to play with this without knocking over the blocks. And I don't know about you, Joey, but <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not only working the foot that's moving, but I'm really working the tripod of the standing foot and the glute change sides. Woo. <laughs> So super slow movement, keep the foot low and working that internal and external rotation of the hip. Get yourself in really awkward places. See how far you can reach. You know, great for knee mobility, knee health. And again, it's just playful and fun and hard work. And yeah, we'll knock well, us over. <laughs> so there's three things that you can do for your feet. I'll share another three sequences in a separate video, but start with that. Keep it super simple. You can get these from anywhere. You're likely to already have them, right? And it's just a fun way to start to strengthen those muscles in the feet that have quite possibly collapsed due to sitting and to wearing shoes. Again, what we practice grows stronger. So if we don't do anything, nothing is gonna change. Take the time out, five or 10 minutes for yourself every day to put back into yourself and see what changes. Thanks again, everyone. We're so grateful.